Hey there, Brady here with your daily tennis lesson. First off, got to give a quick shout out to my older daughter, Mason. She's turning 11 tomorrow. Love you, Mace. Hope you're having a great day, babe. All right, on to the tennis. This week, we are looking at directionals at DTL. Really good, important topic. Uh, got to give some props to Paul Wardlaw. He came up with this idea years and years ago. A lot of pros on tour follow these ideas that we're going to look at this week. Uh, let's get into them. The first would, we, would be what we would call or consider an inside ball, okay? So an inside ball, I want, you to, I want you to imagine that I've got an invisible line coming out of the center of my body here, all right? And as I set up in this position for a forehand, if the incoming tennis ball from my opponent, or in this case, Mark, leaves his racket, and the ball never crosses over this center line. This is what we would call an inside ball. So Mark, you feed it, and the entire time that it traveled from Mark to myself, the ball remained on the same side of my body. That is an inside ball. Okay, so then we look at the opposite, which would be called an outside ball. Notice how Mark's moving over. Okay, so he's now currently on the left side of my body. I've got this invisible center line or this racket here. And you're going to notice that as the ball leaves his racket and gets to my hand for my forehand, it now from start to finish has crossed over the center line of my body. And that would be considered an outside ball. All right, which gets us to our third point today. Why does, why does any of this stuff matter? And this all has to do with when do we as a player change the direction of the incoming ball and think that it's a smart idea or a, or a good idea, okay? So my thought has always been this, and this is what Lord, uh, Wardlaw was preaching, was that on an inside ball, and you guys hopefully have all had at least one tennis lesson in your life. When you start the day, the pro generally stands pretty much right out in front of you and feeds this incoming ball and says, okay, I want you to maybe take that and go cross court. They're not opening the lesson having you hit low percentage shots. They're giving you this inside ball because redirecting it cross court as you could see, was a pretty simple shot for me. And I think for most of us out there, that's a pretty simple shot. Now, Mark might stand there. I'm gonna actually keep you there, Mark. If I go right back where he comes from on this inside ball, I know he's in the way, but that is also a high percentage play. So an inside ball, ultimately, you wanna give yourself the green light to work the ball both directions. If I had to go middle, that wouldn't be a problem either. The outside ball presents an issue with redirecting the shot. We are going to start with a slower feed right now. But notice as this comes in now on a significant diagonal. All right, I'm gonna hit a ball right back to Mark. That felt so easy. These outside balls that cross the center line of my body Taking them back exactly where they came from is the highest percentage play. It's the swing that's going to feel easiest to you as the hitter. If it comes as an outside ball, especially now I'm going to have Mark feed it with some top spin, maybe some slice, whatever you may have, maybe a little more pace. It's coming on a diagonal. I'm redirecting it. You know, and I know he didn't hit it huge right there. That, that probably didn't look too difficult. But that did not feel at all like the ball that I hit back to Mark. All right, so what you're going to see with pros is a lot of times these patterns, you know, they're hitting the ball so big. If a pro is hitting cross court with another pro and, and the rally is solid, it is rare that somebody breaks that pattern up until the ball comes with a lack of pace, a lack of depth, something that makes the ball seem a little bit easier. That would be the time to green light redirecting an outside ball is when it's significantly less of a shot from your opponent. So if Mark floats me now an outside ball and I decide to go 
up the line with it, now there's a, there's a really nice comfort level for me. But anything with more pace, more spin, I want to be the type of player that works the outside ball back where it came from. That is the high percentage play. And the inside ball, you know, the sky's the limit with that. One thing about the inside ball, it's why you'll, it's why you'll see a lot of pros maybe run around a backhand to hit a forehand. You know, if, if Mark's somewhere out on that half and works the ball into my body, if not a little bit to my backhand side, if I, if I go ahead and run around this, that ball never crossed the inside of my body. So now I've essentially created what could have been an outside ball, limiting my potential, created an inside ball, and I can redirect that pretty much any way I want to. So a lot of times the reason for the run around forehand is the feeling of an inside ball. Okay, just a little tidbit because you see that shot so much with the pros. All right, so that's all I got for you today. Directionals this week. We're gonna see a lot of other great content on where and how to put the shots from all over the court. But that's all I got for you today. Hope that was super helpful. Please click like below this video. And if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please do so, as well as check down below me in the description of this video. You'll find the link to three free courses Mark and I have put together. I think you'll find those really helpful as well. All right, so until next time, be well. We'll see you soon at Daily Tennis Lesson.